Hello, you all. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, hello, my name is Aminata Ja Finch, or AMI for short, and I am GSA's program coordinator. Um, before we get started, um, I wanted to know, um, you can go ahead and say hello in the chat, um, but we wanted to know who you are, so state your name and where you're from, so what county. Um, again, my name's Ami. Um, I'm from Kenton County, <laughs> and I went to Lloyd High School. Um, that was about 10 years ago, so that definitely shows my age. So you can go on ahead and start chatting. Sam Beck from Jefferson County, how are you? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out. Natalie from Kenton, oh, hey, represent, yes. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad you're good. <laughs> Your name is, is it Ali or Ali from Callaway County? Cooper from Jefferson County, Ella from Fayette, awesome. Mia Jefferson. Oh, Mia from Jefferson County. Sorry about that. Ethan from Jefferson County. Savannah from Erlanger. Did you go? Uh, did you go to Lloyd? Do you do you currently go to Lloyd? Because I know Erlanger Ellesmere Independent only has one high school. You can't hear, but you are Eva from Kenton. Um, I believe the best way to um hear what I'm saying is to get out of the Zoom and then hop back in. And if you can't do that, um, definitely email me and I will um, shoot you another link. James from Warren County, hello. Okay, and I think that's it for everyone. I know there's about nine people here. So again, thank you so much for coming. Um, before we get started, um, I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll. So I'm going to ask you about four questions and it will pop up on your screen. So you can go on ahead. So, you know, we want to get to know you, um, what best describes you. What art forms are you interested in? Okay, some people are already answering. Awesome. Have you attended or viewed an info session? And have you applied to GSA before? Because you can apply um, twice. So um, if you haven't um, attended GSA before and you haven't um, gotten in the first time, you can apply for a second time if you are a sophomore going into junior year. Okay, awesome. And I'll give you a couple of more seconds to answer. All right, three, two, one, and pull. Okay, awesome. So everyone here is currently in 10th or 11th grade. So that means you're all students, <laughs> which is awesome. Okay, you're interested. Two people are interested in architecture and design. Awesome, two in creative writing. All of you in film and photography, obviously. One in instrumental music. Three in visual art, awesome. So multidisciplinary students, great. Have you attended or viewed a recording of a previous GSA virtual info session? Five of you have, that is super impressive and we applaud you. And four of you know, but hey, you're here today. So we applaud you as well. Have you applied to GSA before? Two of you have, awesome. We're glad that you are reapplying. And some of, seven of you are new, okay, awesome. So I will go ahead and stop sharing this portion of the screen. And um, we're gonna move on. Um, so basically um, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce um, the individuals who are joining me tonight. And then we're gonna go on to a PowerPoint. So it will be just a general overview, a very quick overview of GSA. So first up um, is my colleague, Paula O. Lockhart, who is the program manager <laughs> hey y'all, my name is Paula O. Lockhart. I am the program manager here at GSA. I am so happy to be with y'all tonight. Thank you so much for taking the time to come learn and learn about film and photography, y'all. I cannot talk today. 
had to go to the orthodontist, <laughs> braces fam, you feel me? Um, but just thank you so much for being here with us and for learning from um, our esteemed faculty what the film and photography program is about here at the Governor's School of the Arts. Um, when I'm not at GSA, um, I am a theater artist. Um, yes, Natalie, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a theater artist. I um, act, direct, and I teach. So um, maybe one day I'll get some of y'all to take some headshots for me. Um, we do have a Q&A button. So um, if y'all have any questions while in your, while the presentation is going on, feel free to use that. Oh, sorry, Ami. Maybe awesome. Say, Thank you right. so much. <laughs> All right, so we are going to go on ahead to um, two of our esteemed faculty members in um, film and photography. Um, I don't know if you all want to introduce yourselves both at the same time or if you want me to go out one at a time, but I'll go ahead and introduce you all. So um, first up is James Kenny. Hello. Um, boy, I look like I'm really in the dark here. <laughs> <Just say. laughs> Oh, okay, I might. Well, you can only improve so much. Um, welcome. Uh, my name is James Kenny. I'm James from Warren, by the way. There, I mean, I just thought I'd you know chime in. So I'm the ninth member, but I'm actually a faculty member and uh, here at your disposal tonight to uh, answer any questions you might have. And um, Let's see, I'm from Western Kentucky University. I'm a coordinator of the photojournalism program there. This is my, I'm going into my fourth year at GSA and I was at GSP for uh, five years before that. So welcome everybody. Awesome, thank you so much. And we're happy that you're here. Thank okay, you. great, welcome. So we are gonna move on to the second film and photography faculty member, Will Cravens. Hello all, I'm Will. I'm the film and photography faculty chair. Um, this will be my sixth year with the program. So I'm very excited to be here um, chatting with you guys about the applicant guide today. Um, I know this is a, um, it is a lot of work to put together a portfolio and all that good stuff, but we are here to alleviate some of the anxiety that you might have about it because it is much easier um, than you might think. Um, it is, yeah, I'm just excited to be here. If you can't tell, I'm just supposed to introduce myself, but I can't wait to talk about this stuff. Um, yeah, I'm a filmmaker and photographer here in Louisville, Kentucky. So um, yeah, very glad to be here. Woo, thank you so much. We're happy that you're here as well. But um, before we get started, um, so a quick overview, um, we're gonna do just like a quick slideshow of GSA, just general information. Um, everyone will be able to see the PowerPoint on their screen. Um, then we'll hop off. Um, I'll go back and um, we'll start talking about um, the applicant guide for film and photography. And I'll sort of jump in back and forth. So you all will be able to see the shared screen of the app guide, and then we'll hop off, ask a question, discuss, and then keep going. So it'll be sort of a back and forth, but yeah, it will be fun. <laughs> Okay, so I will go ahead and stop my video and you all can stop your video, mute yourselves as well. And I'll go ahead and share my screen and restart that PowerPoint. Okay, all right. So again, um, welcome to today's session. Well, we, we will, well, you already have met two of our faculty members for film and photography, and we'll chat with them about what GSA looks for in the application for film and photography. Um, again, there will be time for a Q&A at the end of today's presentation. So feel free to use the Q&A feature in Zoom to ask your questions. So at the bottom of your screen, um, if you are joining us on Zoom, you should, re you should receive a survey, sorry, I can't talk today either, at the end of today's session. So this survey will help GSA assess how well we are recruiting. So please take a moment to fill that out. And again, it will come at the end and it will go straight to your emails. All right, so if you aren't already aware, um, 
Today's session is a part of a larger series of virtual info sessions that GSA is hosting throughout the autumn for applicants, parents, and educators. So we do hope that you will take advantage of these many resources to learn more, ask questions, and connect with the GSA team. So I'm um, looking at this timeline. Um, October 6th was the GSA 101 webinar. Um, you can actually um, view the recording on YouTube right now. Um, you can either search that on YouTube through um, the Kentucky GSA um, channel, or you can go on GSA's website and you'll see a link to that YouTube um, video as well. Um, October 13th was when the applicant guides were released and um, you can see that webinar on YouTube as well, same page. Um, November 3rd was when the application opened up and that's when we did our application walkthrough webinar. You can see that on our website as well and YouTube. Um, so throughout this month, um, we are doing art form specific webinars with faculty. Um, right now, obviously you're in the film and photography session. Um, and those will always, almost always be at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so 4 p.m. Central Time. Um, so December 1st, we will do a redo of GSA 101 in case you missed the first webinar on October 6th. And December 15th, um, we will do an open Q&A webinar. So you can ask us all the questions you want. Okay, and um, remember that these info sessions are not the only way to get information about the GSA application process. So you can contact GSA with any kind of question at the GSA helpline. So it will be at 502-566-5192, or you can email us at GSA info at KentuckyPerformingArts.org. Um, nine times out of 10, if you call or email us, I will be the one picking up the phone or answering your email. Um, just as a reminder, there are no scary adults at GSA waiting to judge you. Um, we are the nicest crew ever. We are the dream team. Um, <laughs> in fact, uh, we do love chatting with our applicants and it is our pleasure and our job to help you out. In addition, um, please follow us on social media. So you can search our program's name to find us on Facebook. Um, so it would just be the Kentucky Governor School for the Arts. Um, on YouTube, um, it's the actual forward Kentucky with GSA at the end. And then on Instagram, our at is at Kentucky GSA, so K-Y-G-S-A. All right, so moving on, um, we will quickly review some information about the GSA summer program itself. So um, GSA is a three week residential summer program that takes place on a college campus. So students attend GSA for one of nine art forms and the program is completely tuition free. If you haven't heard, um, we actually recently made the exciting announcement that we're going to double in size for the summer program for the next three years. And this is thanks to supplemental funding provided by the Kentucky Department of Education. Um, this means that we expect to grow from our previous class size of 256 students to accepting approximately 500 students for the summer of 2022. Um, we are still finalizing exactly how, when, and where this expansion will take place. And um, there are many questions you might have about the expansion that we won't have answers for just yet. But with that being said, um, we will release any and all information as soon as we have it. Um, however, what we do know is that GSA summer program will take place in June and or July of next summer. And at least part of the student body will have their GSA experience on the campus of our current host institution, the University of Kentucky, so UK. Um, to determine the class size for each specific art form in our expanded model, um, we are looking at how many students have applied to each art form over the past few years and are trying to ensure that all art forms have as similar as possible acceptance ratios. Um, this means that while the total number of students we accept across all art forms will double, um, some art forms will grow in size more than others. So for example, um, while numbers are subject to change, we currently anticipate that we'll go from a total of 12 student spots to a total of 32 for film and photography. So it's from 12 students to approximately 32. And um, we do currently anticipate that. Okay. Moving on, um, students must currently be a sophomore or a junior to apply. So at the time of application, so now you must be a current sophomore or a junior. Um, we do not ask you for your GPA, your SAT or ACT scores during the process. And you can apply for up to two art forms, which is awesome because I know um, several of you um, are multidisciplinary. So you study more than just film and photography. 
Um, there is an application fee of $30 or um, it is $35 total if you are applying in two art forms. Um, but this fee is waived by the click of a button in the application for students who qualify for free and reduced lunch. So again, um, if you um, are on free and reduced lunch, um, you can waive that fee by the click of a button in the application. So the application um, platform we do use is called accepted. It's the word accepted without the last E at the end. And um, while we're thrilled to speak with you about GSA's film and photography program today, and we are confident that this session will be helpful, um, please remember that today's virtual informational session will not be 100% comprehensive, and that there are some other very important resources that you should utilize to learn more about the program and the application. And all of this is available on our website, which is www.kentuckygsa.org. So again, that is kentuckygsa.org and you have to spell out Kentucky. Um, also be sure to read the applicant guide for your art form of interest. Um, for all of you it would be film and photography plus one more art form, whatever you're interested in. Um, we will review the applicant guide for film and photography um, as part of today's conversation, but you should take some time to carefully review the document yourself. Right, moving on, the GSA 2020, sorry about that. The GSA 2022 application is due by the end of the day. So um, it would be 11.59 PM Eastern Standard Time on January 9th. So that's 11.59 PM Eastern Standard Time because we know that some of you are not in the Eastern time zone. Um, note that this is a Sunday. So that means the GSA office is not staffed on the, uh, is not staffed on that day. So we are not staff, staffed on the weekends. So that means that January 7th is the last day that you can call or email us with questions. And if you do have any questions um, on or before that day, um, we are in the office Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we do recommend completing your application at least one week in advance of the January 9th deadline. So students will learn if they've advanced to the second and final round on February 18th. So that is one month, about one month before the final round auditions and reviews will take place. That'll take place on March 18th and 19th. So again, um, the second and final round um, announcement will be um, February 18th and then final auditions and reviews will take place on March 18th and 19th. So um, GSA's um, final round auditions usually take place in person at the University of Kentucky, but although given the unknowns of COVID, um, you can expect to learn more about the process later in the application cycle. So we will provide you with um, more information on exactly if it will be in person and just anything in regards to that. So we will announce the GSA class of 2022, as well as the alternates placed on the wait list on April 15th. And finally, GSA 2022 will take place in June or July and or July of 2022. So right now we don't have specific dates on when GSA 2022 will be, but we do know it will take place in June and or July. So we do um, expect to announce exact, exact dates in the coming month or so. Okay, all right. Woo, so that was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> but um, again, we're going to go ahead and get started because I know Will is super excited to speak about the film and photography program. So I will go ahead and share my screen again. Um, again, um, I will go ahead and share my screen and show the um, film and photography applicant guide. I will be reading off of it and then sort of getting off and then we'll start talking to Will and James about their thoughts on that part of the applicant guide. So let's get started. Okay, so the applicant guide. Ta-da! So you can actually um, see this on um, our official website, KentuckyGSA.org. Um, if you don't know where that is, um, definitely um, hit us up um, via email and I can send that link over to you. But to start things off, um, the program description. So GSA's film and photography program focuses on 
visual communication. And before I go further, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you all can see. So GSA's film and photography program focuses on visual communication through photography and film slash videography. So students in the program learn of a wide variety of technical material and approaches with a documentary focus for photography, balanced by writing, directing, and producing their own films. And in addition to um, instruction and studio time split between still photography and film production slash videography, students participate in workshops and demonstrations conducted by guest artists and take field trips to put their knowledge to work. So students discuss and critique their works in progress and that of their classmates as part of the studio experience. Faculty members also discuss professional careers in the field and coach students in preparation of portfolios for college applications. Student work is displayed in public exhibition on the final day of the program. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen for a second. And we will go on ahead. So we're Will and James. So what do you all, um, how would you describe attending GSA for the film and photography program? Will, did you wanna, you wanna start out? <laughs> sure, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just start off by saying film and photography is a lot of fun. Um, we, as the program or the applicant guide says, we we are not only out there shooting um, and writing and working on our films. Um, we're putting our 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 you know tools to. We're practicing uh, is is what I'm trying to get to. We are shooting, we are planning, and we are executing our you know our our craft. So again, we take field trips. We make short films. Um, we take a lot of pictures. It's exactly what you might hope for. Uh, I think James and I have designed a really good program um, that incorporates not only the craft, but we have a lot of fun doing it. Um, yeah, that's my short answer, James. Yeah, I mean, I think the unique part of this program compared to anything else I've ever been involved in is the idea of um, combining the film and photography aspects. Um, there's obviously a lot in common, but there's also a very different approach to things. Um, and so it, it's a bit of a, I wouldn't say left brain, right brain, but certainly you gotta be juggling a bit, you know, between the two. And I think that's what makes it unique and exciting because, you know, maybe you're a little frustrated on the still shooting side, but you know, you got your film to work on and sometimes you need to just take a break from your film and working on your film and you, you know, we've got a field trip and you can go out and shoot stills. Um, so you'll be hopping for sure uh, during, during that time. Um, but it's kind of fun to be able to go back and forth. And it's been very interesting for me to see how uh, students have responded to that. Um, past students have responded to that. And uh, those that maybe weren't as experienced film wise uh, really grew to love it and, and vice versa, you know, um, and it's, it's been great to just observe that kind of awakening, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, you all are definitely the top for my favorite, <laughs> um, disciplines in this, um, awesome program. So well, <laughs> do not course. tell any of I the mean, other I... art forms. Um, you all in creative writing have a special place in my heart. But <laughs> moving on, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again and discuss some of the preliminary round um, requirements. And I apologize if I keep tripping over my words. I'm not very good at like reading things and, you know, speaking at the same time. <laughs> so <laughs> we will get going. Okay, awesome. Okay, so the preliminary round application is due January 9th. You all already know that. Um, we already discussed this. So for the preliminary round, um, 
this is basically, um, so the first one, two, three. So the first three bullet points is for every single art form. So you need two recommendation forms, a personal short essay, personal, um, you need to complete a personal question video, answer um, art form specific questions, submit a portfolio of images and videos, and then submit a portfolio cover sheet. So first three is for all art forms, and then the last is particular for film and photography. All right, so the recommendation forms. Um, for those who have um, applied last year and are coming back for this year, um, we have um, changed this requirement just a little bit, so I'll go ahead and discuss. Um, so you do have to identify two people who will complete the recommendation forms for you in support of your GSA application. So each person will complete the same form separately. Um, when you do this form, um, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is um, type the email address of your recommender within the application process, and then the application platform will send them an email saying, hey, this person has submitted you as a recommender, please fill out this form. So it's a little questionnaire. You don't have to go out and request like um, recommendation letters from your teachers or try to flag them down. All right, so to note, um, previous GSA um, application cycles have required recommendations from a teacher and school administrator. So this is a note for those who have applied last year. Um, the recommendation guidelines have changed this year to broaden the scope of who may complete these forms. So this is more accessible for everyone. So um, definitely um, review the guidelines below. And again, I'll re read these for ver per verbatim, wow. The recommendation form includes um, questions about your artistic abilities and potential, um, how you contribute to your learning environment and community, and your overall fit for GSA. So um, if you can select two recommenders who can speak to your artistic abilities, um, we encourage you to do so. But however, we do understand that um, not every applicant will have um, one or two recommenders. Um, who have experienced um, your artistry. So in this case, case just select to select a re recommender who can speak to your character, your accountability and or work ethic. So this person doesn't necessarily have to know you as an artist, but they need to speak highly to your character. So who you are as an individual. Um, the recommenders can be teachers. So from inside and outside your school in any subject, um, a school administrator, so like a guidance counselor, a principal, et cetera. Um, a mentor outside of school or um, people involved in your personal or art artistic development. So like a coach, a youth minister or a staff at an organization for which you volunteer. Um, again, um, I already discussed this, you will enter the names and email addresses of each recommender um, in the online application and those individuals will receive an email. Um, and it will be an email from, again, it will be the um, application platform called Accepted. Um, and it will instruct them um, how to complete the recommendation form and the form will probably take about five minutes. Um, so before you submit your recommend re recommenders information, we do strongly encourage um, you to inform them that you are applying for GSA. So don't just like put in somebody's email address and you didn't tell them that you're applying to GSA because it can get kind of awkward. <laughs> um, and then let them know that you they will complete the short form via email and that their responses are confidential so that you as the student will not have access to them. So you won't be able to see your recommenders um, answers to your survey. So um, then if they do have any questions, um, definitely um, let us know um, via email or phone and then we can do our best to help them out. Um, and also confirm the email address that you're submitting for them because we've had a couple of students so far um, accidentally like maybe mistype an email address. Um, if that happens to you or you come across an issue, definitely email me. Um, I will go in the system and fix that for you. Um, submit your um, recommenders information first. So that is the first, absolute first thing you should do in the application process. So get that out of the way. Um, and it will come from this email address. So do not reply at getaccepted.com. Be titled document, documentation request from, and then it will have your name for the Kentucky Governor's School for the Arts. Um, and then um, when you um, submit um, the recommendation, recommender request, um, ask your recommenders to confirm with you that they've submitted your form, their form, so that you're not sort of left in the air. Um, even though um, you don't technically have to like flag down your teachers, recommenders, et cetera, it is good to just touch base with them and say, hey, you know, have you received um, my recommender email and have you filled it out so that they're not like freaking out so that you're 
you have more of a sense of calm <laughs> in regards to completing that part of the process. All right, and um, once you submit your recommender's information, um, you will um, have to click back into your profile to access the remainder of the application. So basically um, you get sort of not like kicked out of the application, but you get back up into logging back in to the accepted platform so that you can complete the rest of the application process. So this is why we ask you to, um, to complete this step first. Okay, and again, no letters of recommendation recommendation are needed, um, you should review, you should not be able to review the context of your recommendations. Um, you, your parents and immediate family may not fill out your recommendation forms because that's considered cheating. Um, to, and yeah, so I've already covered um, most, well, actually all of the recommendation requirements. So I'm going to go ahead, stop sharing my screen. And now I am back. <laughs> okay, so next question for Will and James. And I apologize, you had to sit through that. <laughs> I am not made for the camera. So how do you all um, use the recommendation forms as part of the um, sort of scouting process for like the applicant pool? You know, I think it's a pretty critical part of the um, the process. Um, I think it's it's you know it's our considered our you know you're introduce you're introducing yourself to us and you're letting us know who you are, what you're made of, uh, what you do, what you love, what you don't love. You know, so it's it's an important part of that process of. Um, opening the door i would say to uh you know to the program and giving us that kind of initial impression and we continue to use it throughout the process yeah i would add that it's it's important i think to choose um you know people who know you well as an artist someone who can speak to your strengths and some of your you know characteristics and, and how you work and um you know it there's a lot of words but the real the real short version of that whole section is uh you know choose somebody who knows you well um so that they can write a letter to us you know or, or send us a recommendation that really speaks to to who you are as an artist um i think that's the simple short um we're just we're dotting our i's and crossing our t's with a lot of the language in there but you know it's very simple someone who knows you well can speak well to um yeah to you and, and who you are as an artist so I, was, awesome. I guess i was kind of responding to the application as a whole you were just wanting to know specifically about the references um but uh so some of what i said may have not made sense uh, unless you were thinking about the whole application i was thinking about both so you're good <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm, you know I'm I'm with uh, Will in terms of the references. I mean, yeah, I do think it, it's important that you choose somebody that, and even have a, maybe a little conversation with them in terms of not you know what would you say about me, but certainly you know have some assurance that it's going to be more than just um, you know she's a student of mine, you know, mm -hmm. but can give us some some insight because we we do rely on those. You know. mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. So basically, you look at the whole individual. So it's like a holistic process into looking at somebody's character and what they can bring to the table. Okay. Right. So awesome. So definitely be a good person. Um, don't be a bad person. Um, and yeah, choose people who can speak highly to you and your abilities. And moving on. Ahead. I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen again, and we are going to go through requirements. Okay, all right. So after your recommendation forms, um, you will have to complete a short essay. So this is at max 250 words. 
And the question we are asking you is to describe your personal connection to your art form or creative practice. So why and how is it important to you on a personal level? So we do ask you to be as open and honest as possible. Um, so we wanna learn about you, so at the core. Um, and we do ask you to upload this response um, as a document file. And yeah, so when you upload it, um, you do have to title the file um, personal short essay. After that, um, we, we do ask you to submit a personal question video. Um, this is 90 seconds max. And this is kind of like the short personal essay, except you're on video um, answering a couple of questions um, live. So um, the question that um, you will be answering is to describe your vision for how your individual artistic work or creative practice can impact others. So how do you want to affect others through art and or what response do you hope others have to your work? Again, um, we want you to be as authentic as possible. And we do, in, we do um, encourage you to prepare your thoughts beforehand if that's easier for you. And you can consult um, notes as you speak. So you can have notes in front of you, but make sure that when you're speaking, it's not like you're reading off of a screen, kind of like what I'm doing right now, <laughs> a contradiction. <laughs> but we do want to um, get a sense for your personality. So we wanna see who you are as a person and just who you are uniquely. Okay, um, we do ask that you record your answer and in, in, inside um, in an inside space that's free from interruptions, noise, et cetera. So do not edit or splice the video. So don't um, you know start off the video answering the question and then like it's a weird like cut and then you're starting over again. So don't do that and don't put in any effects. Um, we ask you to shoot straight on, leaving the camera in one location and review the video to ensure that you can be seen and heard. So ensure that the video plays all the way till the end as well. And when you upload the personal question video, title the file um, personal question video. <laughs> all right. And then for um, art form specific questions, um, this is when um, the application process gets sort of divided depending on what art form you're in. So um, you will be asked questions about your specific interests in, in film and photography and your level to access to training and classes and lessons in your art form. So um, you can review the specific um, questions um, for your art form once you've submitted um, your recommend, recommender information. So again, it's that process of submitting your recommendation form, um, logging back out, then logging back in, and then you see the second part of the process, which is, um, the um, essay, the um, questionnaire video, and then you go on to the art form specific questions. And again, um, there are no right, right and wrong answers to these questions. And again, bring your authentic self to the table. Right, and then you must submit a portfolio, well, 10 total works. So 10 works, a full portfolio for film and photography. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and this part is super art form specific. So I will jump off here and go ahead and let Will and James go through these requirements with you all. So, and do you all want me to go ahead and keep sharing my screen with the application requirements or no? Sure. Okay. Um, you, you can, I would think, I would hope some of the <laughs> students have pulled it up by now. Uh, on their own. Just um, in case, so I'll, I'll go ahead and share sure. that again. <laughs> All right. Oh, I see. So we're not discussing the uh, other things mentioned above the essay and that sort of stuff we can if you'd like for sure like what um, I, I just thought it might be helpful um yeah, to kind of, of touch on each one awesome um because the the personal short essay it's mm -hmm. um, it's very simple uh, you know it you just answer that question mm -hmm. um but i think the idea with these you know bc 
especially is just to get a sense of who you who you are as an artist from your perspective again the recommendations are from somebody else but these are from your perspective um mm -hmm. what makes you an artist and what um you know what insight we might be able to get into um you know what you're interested in what you might want to do with your craft you know as an artist um, so that's what these are really about for us and then um would you say the same for the personal question video yeah i think so okay yeah i mean you've laid out the language very nicely here yeah, in the applicant guide itself but mm -hmm. um, i thought it was important to kind of emphasize you know from us as faculty that we do take um, all of these as you know elements into account um, you know to 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 see you know who you are holistically as as an artist two things one and this may seem kind of obvious but make sure you answer the question um, <laughs> read the question carefully and actually answer the question and two remember everything that you're doing uh, especially since you're applying for film and photography um okay well maybe we do, well we do write in there right well because you do scripts and that kind of thing so um making sure that your writing is is uh you know it's well written and um edited you know in terms of making sure that there's no mistakes and typos um and your video um if you want to kind of show us your prowess in terms of your ability to light and understand lighting and um, it may be kind of subtle, but when you're doing your video for your, your portrait video and you're talking in, you know, into the camera, uh, have some nice lighting there, some window lighting or something like that. And mm -hmm. that's kind of a subtle way of letting us know that you kind of know what you're doing and, and that that's the little things are important. So That's a good point. I'll, I'll say it's not heavily weighted, those things. It is very subtle. Um, it is there, but it's if, you know, many of these videos come in from phones or the laptop, you know, camera, um, we're not expecting Spielberg shots or anything. Um, so you can keep it simple, but, you know, any subtle improvements you can do, like lighting, as James said, can mm -hmm. help. So add your film and photography flair. <laughs> right. Yes. Awesome. Okay. All right. So with the art form specific questions, do you have any specific advice for students? Can you all hear me? Yeah, yes. I'm just okay. kind of re reading it over. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> I was like, did uh, I go mute? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, don't you think, Will? Or yeah, it. I would just say be honest. Um, you know, if we ask about your experience with a particular, um, you know, medium, you know, whether it's film or photography, and you know, maybe camera gear or equipment, any of that, um, be honest because that is a way for us to um, see what our needs might be on, on the end as faculty, you know, maybe we need to get more cameras or lights or what have you to make sure everyone has what they need. Um, so yeah, just, I would be honest with every, all the questions, um, that's obvious, but it's worth, I think, uh, emphasizing. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Moving on to the portfolio. So Oh, this doesn't really matter that much. No, I'm just <laughs> You're just yeah, like, it's, it's, it's uh, slightly important. Uh, um, I think, you know, my main thing on the still side is um, show variety. I think that um, obviously the quality, you know, is, is really important, but um, try to show variety. Um, you know, maybe not even if you have one picture of yourself, don't have three uh, or your, your your friend or whatever it might be. Um, pick your best, you know, pick your best from that part of what you do and then, you know, see what else you have. And I think since you have some time, um, 
before this is due, right? When is it, when are they due? Right. So 11.59 p.m. on January 9th. So you got, you know, you got a few months. Um, mm -hmm. Not that you're necessarily shooting for an application, but I'm assuming that you're going to be shooting between now and then. Uh, and in, in doing so, understanding the idea of like variety, you know, what, what are some things that I could explore, something that I've been meaning to try, and, uh, you know, that is something I haven't done. I think all that could come together very well in a, in a portfolio in terms of showing that kind of variety and exploration. I agree. Um, I would also recommend, you know, if you have a particular interest um, in a type of work, um, I would I would showcase that, you know, if if you're particularly interested in portraits or landscape or what have you, um, make sure that's represented in your portfolio. Um, because it's likely that some of your best work is going to be in that form. Um, and we like to see um, your portfolio represent you and who you are as an artist um, and what you're interested in. You know, that they may seem obvious, but um, I just think it's, it's important for us to get a sense of who you are and who, what type of work you're interested in. Um, you know, now going forward, um, GSA is a good opportunity to explore all of those things. Um, but we like to get an idea of kind of where you are uh, now and what you're interested in. Okay, awesome. And just a quick question for you all. So if someone's interested in animation, are they allowed to do that? So submit animated works to you all. Yes, animated um, film especially is, is you know. Okay. Yeah, ab absolutely, yeah. I actually had somebody ask that question yesterday and I was like, maybe I should ask this. That's awesome. Yes, I would read through um, this section, you know, a few times because it is very wordy and it seems technical. Um, but once you kind of break it down to each individual, it's it's not too hard. It, it, we're just trying to make sure like when we do four of this and five, of the, it's just to make sure that we see some variety. Um, it's not meant to impose more requirements on you as, you know, applicants. It's really just so that we make sure that we see a variety. Um, I hope that makes sense. It's it's not like we're imposing more for you guys to do. It's, um, you know, um, yeah, It I will say it is an opportunity um, to maybe, as James said, explore some of the other styles or, uh, you know, or subject matter that maybe you haven't in the past prior to the application. Awesome. Okay. So um, do you all um, have any um, thoughts or comments about the final round requirements? Um, if it's sort of similar to like the first round or anything like that? Yeah, it's pretty similar, the questionnaire especially. Um, mm -hmm. It's, again, just to let us get even more detailed insight into, um, you know, your interest and what your, your needs might be. Uh, again, we make some decisions uh, leading up to the start of the program that, you know, because we are flexible, we are film and photography. Um, so that helps James and I kind of uh, balance the workload and what uh, we might focus on as far as the curriculum goes. So once again, just be honest with us and, and um, fill it out the best you can. Okay. And did so, you include the uh, interview as well? Or is that Yes. Is that where you're right asking here. about that, Ami? Yes. <laughs> um, you know, I think the main thing with the interview, and and you know, I I can say this all I want. You'll still be nervous, but if you get to that point where you're being, you know, you have this interview, and I I, I would hope that what would come across with both Will and I is we're not we're not looking for like some sort of mistake to eliminate you. Uh, well, what we are looking at is just to try to get some deeper insight as to who you are, what your passion is, you know, why you want to do this so badly, uh, that kind of thing. It's it's more of a just getting to know you on a deeper level than just on paper, you know, so. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right. And the criteria. 
So can you tell us a little bit um, about the criteria that you all are looking for when you all adjudicate and all that good stuff? Yes, so it's um, all each of them is somewhat self-explanatory, but they are um, somewhat interconnected. Um, you know, uh, I'll speak to, you know, the film side. Film is a very um, inclusive medium. You have a lot of different technical and formal element aspects to it all in one frame. You know, you can composition, lighting, other technical skill. Like, so it's, uh, this is a way for us to kind of help break those down for us as the adjudicators to kind of get a sense of, um, of where you might be as far as your, you know, your education. So uh, like James says, these are not meant to be like, aha, they don't have this, you know, technical skill of some sort. No, it's not like that. This is more us to, to see where you guys are um, in your education in some of these elements, um, or, or at least what your portfolio represents. Um, because we talk about these things in, in class, in studio. Um, so this, it's a good introductory, um, you know, the application itself is an introduction to some of what we might be going over. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, and just looking at them real quick, the, you know, the first two, they're really mm -hmm. talking about light and composition and, uh, the, the third one technical skill is, is more about the nuts and bolts, uh, mm -hmm. still it's certainly on the still side. I would imagine on film as well, just, you know, uh, shutter speed, uh, you know, aperture, the, the video settings, uh, gain, you know, all, all the things that if you don't have those in place, then they get in the way of the more artistic form of the content. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then the artistic voice and originality is just, you know, it, it's kind of your stamp on, on uh, the work. You know, I, I, I'd like to say everybody can shoot with good composition, not necessarily, uh, but if you understand composition, um, you can you can do that well by rote, you know, just by understanding it. But artistic voice and originality, that's you. And that's mm -hmm. your stamp on taking that composition and light and f-stops and shutter speeds and doing something with it that make us go, wow, that's mm -hmm. cool. Yes, uh, I think I'll add that, that all of those elements are important. Um, again, I don't think you have to necessarily think about those as you're making the work. Make your work, um, take your pictures, make your films, um, incorporate, you know, all of these, those things that are listed as the elements that we kind of uh, adjudicate are really, um, all, of, all of those kind of come together to create the craft itself, you know, of what we're doing, um, so that, that we just separate them that way so we can get it once again, a good sense of where you are uh, on, on each of them. Um, Thank you. Again, just to finish the storytelling narrative choices, I think is more about like, you know, what are you trying to say uh, with your work um, story-wise, whether that be a film or uh, your images, uh, you know, what is your message in a sense? Um, and then the dedication to art form growth and community. I think that's really important, especially to GSA that we're looking not just at our own work but looking at you know work in a larger context of your community the community will be forming at gsa you know during during the program itself um in your sense of kind of getting beyond yourself and and thinking about art in terms of a lot in, in a larger context and what you might contribute to that that greater community. Absolutely perfect. Well said. All right. And moving on, um, I know there's a huge list of tips here, but what are um, two or three like huge tips that you like to give out to students or applicants? Well, first and foremost, submit the application, you know. Uh, <laughs> it, um, because, you know, I've, I've been through this process, what, six times in it, every time I reread it, it seems daunting. It really shouldn't be. Um, we lay out all the language and all the criteria, um, so that 
you don't miss anything is really why um, it, you know, you just do them step by step as they're laid out uh, or as suggested. Um, and it, it, it really should, shouldn't cause anxiety or anything. So it just, yeah, it's, it's, this is just like any assignment, um, not only in school, but in the real world, you know, we have criteria and we have guidelines that we have to meet and deadlines we have to meet and that sort of stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, it, I just, um, absolutely submit the application for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get in if you don't. <laughs> True. <laughs> I think a lot of these tips we've kind of gone over in terms of like, you know, variety and that kind of thing. I mm-hmm. would like to speak to uh, the first one, um, which was, you know, uh, include work complete outside of school and school projects. I think there's another one of those things I think that Will's alluding to that you don't want to like put too much pressure on yourself to do this or that as much as my guess is in your high school experience, you're at least encouraged to like involve yourself in activities outside of the school. And maybe there's opportunities there to record what you experience. Um, So it's not necessarily, I've got to get something that's not connected to school as much as it is, I'm going, I'm, I'm doing this community event and it would be kind of a cool thing to maybe photograph that or do a little short film on it. Um, and incorporate it into something you're already doing, something, as Will said, that you already love. And that tends to produce your best work in the end. Great. Okay. So this is pretty much the end of the applicant guide besides the timeline. Um, I've already discussed this, so we're going to go ahead to the fun part and start the Q&A. So I'll start, stop sharing my screen and we will see what kind of questions we have in the chat. All right, so the first question is from Mia George. Um, He says that, I think my teacher may have filled out my film and photography recommendation form twice on accident. (laughs) Is that a problem? I received two emails and they filled it out. Um, I will go ahead and answer this for her. Um, That's actually a glitch on um, the accepted platforms end. So um, if she filled it out twice, it's it's absolutely fine. Um, I will go ahead and I'll write down your name and double check that for you. And if there is an issue, I'll reach out to you. So I apologize for that. All right, and the second one is from an anonymous attendee. Um, So would a super genre specific comedy film that is absurdly self-aware about the tropes and cliches of that genre be something that would be acceptable or is that too niche or easy to misunderstand? Loaded question. (laughs) I like it. Just say yes, Will. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so um as far as the subject matter itself um you know whether it's a comedy or what have you um is somewhat irrelevant to me um as the film faculty that's up to you you're the artist you're the writer the filmmaker um those creative choices are up to you and you alone um i you know i, I think we look at those elements of composition was your you know, and, and timing and editing, you know, was the joke timed right? You know, little silly. Uh, we, we just incorporate all the artistic elements. Um, that sounds absolutely acceptable. Okay. And I, I love a good laugh, so. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I absolutely love this question. So I applaud this person. You didn't have to be anonymous. Okay. Um. One second. So the next question um, I can go ahead and answer. Um, Can a student make it to the final round for two art forms they applied for? Yes, they can. Um, But in the end, if you do get accepted in both, you can only choose one to attend for the summer. So I hope that answers your question. Um, The next is from anonymous attendee. Um, Is there a maximum of two video slash film submissions for the application? Maximum of. Um. Well, I don't. I don't think we have a limit, do we? Well, or. Yeah, I was rereading. I don't think we have a limit as long as you meet the other. Yeah, yeah requirements. Okay. I think 
we've had a student submit five, six, five, you know, at least five films before. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a limit. Maybe we double check that once we log off here. Sounds good. And if the anonymous attendee um, wants to like come back to that question and email us, um, we can do that as well. So we will come back to that if you email us. Um, All right, um, yes. I'm not seeing these questions, but I am seeing a question that seems to have come up in the chat that yeah. is like the only one I see. No, now here comes another one. So I don't know if you're getting the same ones from Savannah. Do you value quality of a photo mm -hmm. or uniqueness more? That's yes. like the first one I'm getting um, on here. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not seeing the other ones, but um, my answer to that, it, the, the question is, do you value quality of a photo or uniqueness more? Mm. Both. I know. <laughs> uh, I mean, oftentimes the, the two really do kind of work hand in hand. Uh, it, it, it is quality because it is unique. Um, and especially when it's something that, as I was saying earlier, kind of has your stamp on it. Um, I know style is kind of overused maybe a little bit too much, uh, but certainly the beauty of photography is that uh, no one does it quite like you. And, you know, if you can bring that you out, whether that be in a unique image, uh, then that's going to be a quality image, ultimately. And there's going to be value to it. Awesome, thank you. And I do see um, another question um, underneath that one. So if a student is not experienced with film, will that affect their application? Um, I would say, um, you know, we, I think we require that one film is made or, or some sort of, you know, video. We're using film broadly here. Um, it, it's, you know, it's, it's to, to see, um, you know, where you're at as far as the filmmaker, because maybe you are more, you know, consider yourself more a photographer. Um, and that's fine. You know, it, I think it is, uh, we include at least one video. Um, you know, we include all the elements that we do so that we can see where you are as far as um, your interest and your diversity in your portfolio, right? So, um, make a, you know, if, if this question is specific to, you know, make a film, see where you're at, um, and submit the application. Okay. Thank I, you I, so um, much. You know, looking at the portfolio, it's four photographs without extreme Photoshop alterations, uh, which we can get into if you want, uh, and uh, one film of any length. Okay. So that's, that's the kind of the base. Then five remaining works, but that can be anything. So, you know, I guess technically that could be five more films or five more images or a mixture. And there's a list here. So read that real carefully because there's several bullet points here of how you can kind of mix those things uh, as well. So I like the any of any length because I think we've had some like 30 second you know, commercials for fake products and that kind of stuff before, you know, or, or very, very short films or, you know, short documentary, you know, with interviews. So I would, I would just say here that, you know, film is very broad. It's, it's video, it's commercial, it's creative film, it's documentary, it's interviews, it's however you want to present yourself. Um, you know, as a filmmaker for that specific, you know, that one element of the application, it's a, it's an opportunity. Thank you. Um, so what is the ratio of film versus um, photography within the program? So is it like a 50-50 split? So like half the time you're doing film, half you're doing photography, or what does that makeup look like? Yeah, it's about... Um, 50 50 you know it's easy way to say it. yeah we're well balanced again we you know we look at um the curriculum that we're we're going to achieve that year um and we make sure that we balance our time effectively so that we you know we get a good balance of both of course 
as far as the time commitment in studio, but also the workload, you know, when things are coming up, when field trips are, when guest artists uh, are, you know, coming to, to studio to talk and that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's about, it's, it's a nice balance. Good. You may on any given day be totally focused on film one day. Uh, on another day, we might go on a field trip or something. And so the, you know, the majority of the day is stills. Um, it just kind of depends on scheduling and, and that, that kind of thing. Um, so um, every day is a, a new adventure. <laughs> That's always good. All right, we have a interesting question here. So this individual is Ella. Um, if the films I'm most proud of are the ones I've done more recently, which were collaborative with other people, um, does that lessen the chances of acceptance as it's harder to see how much is my work versus others? That is a great question. Um, I wouldn't think of it in terms of like less acceptance, any of that kind of stuff. Um, just make sure you indicate, um, you know, in the paperwork there, uh, your role and any questions um, that it may give you the opportunity to explain that further. Um, use that, um, you know, maybe even, um, well, I'm trying to think if there's a specific spot. Um, look through the application guide and see if there's a particular spot to indicate your role in that. Um, I would also see if in the, because um, I think there's a, a description is what yeah, I'm trying to get at in, in your portfolio. There's yeah. like a little description section. Yeah. Uh, make sure to indicate that there. Um, because let's say you were lighting or a camera or just an assistant camera uh, or assistant, what have you. Um, just let us know. Yeah, because the yeah. film is a very collaborative, um, you know, craft. I'm not always the cinematographer on all the films that I work on. I'm not always the director. It's um, there are many, many roles on a film. So we totally get it. Well, have you ever been best boy? Yes. Yeah. I've never really known what that was, but best boy. Yeah, I was best boy like electrician. Oh, okay. Um, see, I, I learn something every day from Will. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, yeah, there is that caption. There's a caption area. And that's important, too, because sometimes I might look at a picture and I, because it's good, I want to know more. Or I was alluding to the Photoshop thing, you know, if you can explain how you did something. And that kind of helps clarify the image um, and I think the same thing with a film that's the perfect place to say here's what I did on this film and be very specific and honest about it and like Will said that doesn't diminish what you're submitting it just helps us know exactly what you did on that film so we can look at that part of it and go okay how did how did you how did the script go here if you were the script writer or, you know if you're the director how you know that kind of thing so just as as much detail as you can provide there um just helps us yeah I've, the portfolio cover sheet i think is where you can indicate that it doesn't have to be a big long essay no. you know yeah just let us know what you did to for on that film i just want to make sure i clarified now that i've looked it up and Kind of the right spot at section F of that. So <laughs> thank you. I would actually say, even go so much to say, don't go on and on in that section. Just give us the, you know, a two or three sentence explanation. Uh, and that'll do it, you know. Okay. Let your work do the rest of the work. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, and we are um, about 10 minutes past the time for um, the webinar. <laughs> no, it's all good. Like you all like to talk to the students, but I'm glad to learn here with them as well. So if you all, um, do you want me to stop at a specific time? Um, we can just keep going till 6.15. Um, what are y'all, you all, what are your thoughts? <laughs> we got more questions? Yes, we have about 13. 
And <laughs> most of them are uh, more generic GSA questions. So I do encourage you all who have generic GSA questions to forward those, just email us at GSA info at Kentucky Performing Arts dot org. Um, and I would be happy to answer those for you. And for all the extra questions, forward those over to me as well, and we can answer those. But um, I'll go ahead and pick out a couple of more specific film and photography questions. All right, so do some, do the pictures I do submit have to be taken from my camera or can some of them be from my phone as well? Does it matter? Um, great pictures can be made with one of those little throwaway cameras that you buy at, buy at Walmart. Uh, one of the assignments I give in my college course, um, in the advanced course actually, is they have to buy one of those disposable cameras and I give them a theme and they have to go out and shoot with it. Now they've been for four years, they've been photographed, you know, taking pictures with their fancy cameras and all that. And I purposely do that to strip away all of that. Just say, what I want to see is your vision. And that can happen with any camera. Uh, having said that, you know, you phones are a, a bit, you know, funky because if you're outside, that's kind of the great equalizer. If, if you're outside in, in uh, bright sunlight, going inside, not so hot. Um, it also depends on what phone you have. I mean, you know, the iPhone 12, iPhone 13. I mean, you know, it's amazing. The new Android, I mean, they're, you know, pretty stunning. Um, you know, so what it really comes down to is not the tool, but what you're doing with the tool and, you know, making the best of it, of what you have and paying attention to technique, but, you know, not worrying so much about what tool you're using that that gets in the way of your vision. Okay. Awesome. For the next question I have is color correction considered an extreme modification? Good question. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. I would not consider color correction to be digital manipulation. You have to understand too, I'm coming from more of a photojournalistic background where, um, you know, the less manipulation you do, the better. And there are many things in photojournalism and even in documentary that, that are kind of hands off compared to commercial photography or some other kinds of photography. And then you start talking about portraiture and that's all controlled kind of thing and manipulated. So then, you know, when you apply that to Photoshop and, you know, post as opposed to in the field, um, I think there's similar things that apply. And from a photojournalistic standpoint, uh, beyond color correction, some, you know, reasonable color correction and, um, light lightness and darkness and contrast you want to be very careful but this isn't just photojournalism i mean we've had works that have been mixed art of painting and photography i mean they've done some really wild stuff and uh i maybe will might disagree here you know that animation is kind of like it is a very different kind of film but it's really interesting to see and quite honestly we don't see a lot of it and you know when it's done well it's very interesting um so i i wouldn't worry so much about whether color correction is you know would be considered unethical or not i think this is an arts program where there's a lot of different ways of going about things and um i think again that's what that portfolio cover sheet's for is to explain what you did you know this is why this doesn't look real Awesome. Because it isn't because I, you know, I took the picture, but then I wanted to do this and I had this vision. And so I used Photoshop to do this. And I'm like, that's, that's really cool. You know, hmm. so. All right. And um, what kind of editing softwares or apps would you guys recommend for editing the students short films? Um, well, real quick, I'll say color correction is fine. Uh, yeah, short answer there. Um, if you're adding anything like the moon to a photo that where it wasn't there, that's digital manipulation. How um, about how about film? Well, like because color correction can be color yeah. grading, which can really change the look of a film. Yeah, that's still that's fine. Okay. 
but um, so as far as um, sorry, Ami, one more time. With yeah. Um, what kind of editing softwares or apps would you all recommend for editing short films? Um, I can throw out some recommendations as far as GSA and the application and all that doesn't matter to me. I have no, I don't uh, care what you use as long as it gets the work to us. Um, you know, we have films edited on Adobe. You know, I think it's Rush on the phone. We have stuff edited on free programs that, that make it to the application and they're great. I wouldn't have known the difference. Um, so as far as we're concerned, use whatever you have access to for sure. Um, yeah, I do like Adobe Premiere to Vinci Resolve is also great. Um, Final Cut is great. Like they're all, you know, as far as the, the paid ones. Um, yeah, would, honestly, whatever gets the work to us, fine, fine by me. Use what you got. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And then can stills count as photographs submitted? Stills? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what the you have to have four still photographs okay. minimum, and then the one film, and then the other five. So a total of 10, four still photographs, one uh, film, and then the other five can be another film, two films, uh, photography, some sort of mixed art type of thing. If you've got, if you're doing something with Photoshop, that kind of thing. So that's where you would put the moon in the picture and then explain that you put the moon in the picture, in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And most of these questions are like, kind of like duplicates of questions you've already answered. So I will go ahead and um, ask just one more from the Q and A and then ask you all a question outside of the Q and A, if that makes sense. All right. So what are the biggest challenges of the film and photography program that tend to come up over the course of the program? So what should applicants look most look forward to in the program? Um, time management, you know, that's a big part of, of who we are as artists. Um, because if, well, if you're like me, um, I can be out shooting all day and forget what time it is, you know, and won't know until the sun goes down. It's like, okay, now it's time to go home. Uh, so we, you know, um, time management is something that we um, encounter a lot as artists, but especially at the program, because it is a short amount of time and we have a lot of work to do and a lot of assignments, field trips, all the, like I said, guest artists. Um, we have a lot of elements that we like to make sure that we, um, that you get to experience. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a, it, point being is a challenge, but that that's what we um, encounter as artists um, in the field as filmmakers and photographers. Yeah, I get a little worried with, on day two if people come in and they look like they haven't slept for a week and a half. Um, so, you know, I think a, ba a balance, obviously part of the, the experience is the social aspect of getting to know other artists people you wouldn't have normally met. I mean, that's the beauty of, of GSA is you're meeting somebody from across the state that has the same vision as you. And maybe it's the first person you've ever met that ha actually has the same vision. And you realize maybe I'm not as weird as I thought I was, you know? Um, so uh, that is important, but it takes a lot of energy to do this. I don't know about Will, but you know, I'm, I'm, I just turned 60 a couple of weeks ago and you know, I need all the energy I can possibly get. And so I need to get my sleep. I need to have some sort of balance. I need to eat. I can't just eat candy bars, you know, all day. Um, and so I think coming into the program, you've got to have a plan, you know, so you don't burn out in two days. Um, and I would say that's probably the most challenging thing because you get here and you're excited and you want to talk to everybody and stay up all night and drink it all in. And then, day two, you're like, boom, you know, and we're like, let's go on a field trip. And you're like, I'm dying. So, Take it. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, just uh, balance. balance. Yes. Sound like your parents, I know. But. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to echo um, what Paula was thinking as well. I do not believe that you are 60. <laughs> <laughs> yep, what the heck? It's a reality. I'm shook. Ago. 
my soul has left my body. <laughs> Jesus is like, no. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 Drop the skincare routine, James. Drop the yes. Um, it's please. It's, uh, you know, I'm gonna be doing the whole retirement thing here soon. So, uh, you know, I can join. I think I got some benefits, old person benefits through, uh, you know, the AARP or something. I don't know. It's coming. It's coming. So. All right. And on that note, um, do you all have any, <laughs> any final words <laughs> for these students? Yeah, I, well, I also see one more in the chat that it ties up nicely with my final thoughts. Um, is it okay to take and make uh, new work for the application? Yeah, I think so. Um, as artists, um, we are we're making new work all the time, you know, or you're planning them, writing. You know, I'm a filmmaker. I'm if I'm not shooting, I'm trying to write something or plan something. Um, so yeah, absolutely. If if you have time between now and when the application is due to take new pictures, um, you know, make another film, go for it. That's great. It's great. Fun by us. Not required. Um, but if you just happen to be, you know, a working artist and continuing your craft, and something is finalized in time, yeah, throw it in there if there's space. Does that make sense, James? Yeah, I I would, you know, mirror that, steal something what you said earlier, which is apply. Um, try it, you know, give it a try. This is this is uh, your chance to shine and uh, and show your work uh, and get feedback. Um, so that's important. And I think it's also important to realize that though you may not necessarily do things for the application, maybe you will. But the important thing here is, is not, not to say I'm doing it just for that. I mean, there should be a desire to, to just create, you know, on a daily basis, really. And so I, I think it comes naturally that between now and January, whenever it was, I, I'm 60, I've forgotten, uh, you know, uh, so, you know, between now and January, I mean, I would hope you would just be on fire to create. And so naturally that, some of that's going to end up in your application is is my guess and if you have to use gsa as kind of like a a way of motivating you at times do it apply give it a try yay perfect. that made me really happy that yeah. was like the perfect end <laughs> well um thank you all so much for joining us tonight um for all the um, students who submitted questions that weren't answered, um, go ahead and ask us via email. Again, um, I'll be answering those. So just shoot us an email, we'll see them. We'll get to you as soon as possible. But other than that, um, thank you for attending my talk show. Thank you for <laughs> you know, bearing through my stutters and my um, slip ups. But you know, you heard it here first, James Kenny is 60 years old. <laughs> 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 but yeah, <laughs> apply for GSA and have a good night. All right. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks Thanks all. All. Yes, of course. Thanks, Will. Thank Thanks, you all for coming. Everyone. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.